All right, moving over to the NFL, as we're still getting some hot topics and headlines uh, through their offseason. And uh, yes, there was a quote that came out this morning that piqued both of our attentions. It was a yeah. Buccaneers GM, Jason Lechter Light, um, talking about Jameis Winston. He said, I would never say that personally, and I think I speak on behalf of the organization that he was a bust. Now, this is a guy. I wouldn't say it personally, but you say it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking about a guy who, yeah, he threw 30 interceptions last year, but he had 30 yep. TDs. He threw to two wide receivers for 1,000 yards. And, yeah, he wasn't great, but is he really that bad? Do you think Jameis Winston is a bust five years no. into his career? He was drafted first overall 2015. You can't say bust. When you say he's a bust, that means he's, he shouldn't even be playing at that level. You know, that's what, that's what I get at least from it. Because the last guy I would agree with that was a bust was a guy like Johnny Manziel. We yeah. talked about this. This guy, the reason I'm saying he's a bust is he should not be playing at that level. And it's shown. He's, is he playing in the NFL anymore? You could, no. You couldn't cut in the CFL. You can't tell me that Jameis Winston can't fit any team in the NFL right now. For sure. Like, that's, that's a joke. And I think, okay, is he a bust for a first overall pick? Perhaps. We're going to get into that. But I think his first overall picks, everybody thinks you're getting a franchise quarterback. And obviously, he's not a franchise quarterback. He's not going to lead you to a Super Bowl. But that is a dumbfounded, wrong notion. And I just want to explain to you why. I just want to read out to you the first overall picks since the year 2000. So Peyton Manning went 1998. He won two Super Bowls. Since 2000, I'm going to list you every first overall pick. And you tell me which of these guys were actually not a bust. And guess how many Super Bowls combined between all of them. So 2000, Courtney Brown. Who is he? 2001, Michael Vick. Okay, he was good. He wasn't a bust. 2002, he was good. He was David, bust. David Carr, bust. 2003, Carson Palmer. Not a bust, but then win a Super Bowl, bounced from team yeah. to team. 2004, Eli Manning. Two Super Bowls. Then you got Alex Smith. was good. Then Mario Williams, Jamarcus Russell, Jake Long, Matthew Stafford, Sam Bradford. All those guys, if you're saying Jameis is a bust, then all those guys are busts, right? Stafford for sure, yeah. Yeah, Stafford. How about Jake Long, Jamarcus Russell, Mario Williams? Uh, wasn't very good. Sam Bradford? Are you kidding me? This guy couldn't stay healthy for more than four games at a time. Then, yeah. obviously, you have Cam Newton. He was an MVP. Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. Walt, retired before the age of 30. Then 2013, Eric Fisher. 2014, now you start getting some decent guys. Jadavian Clowney, good player. Then Jameis Winston. Yeah. Jared Goff, jury's out on him. Then Miles Garrett, Baker Mayfield, who he's on that trajectory to be a bust, man. And then Kyler Baker Murray. Baker Mayfield? Yeah. And Kyler Murray. Actually, I, I, at this point, I don't think you can call him a bust. No, I said he might be on the trajectory to be there. He might. Oh, if you're going to call James Winston a bust, you're yeah. calling him a bust. And then Kyler Murray, we'll see what he does second year. We've talked before on this show about how important the second year is for a QB. But out of those yeah. 20 guys I just named, there's been two Super Bowl winners, both by Eli Manning, in the last 20 first overall picks. You do not generally get a franchise quarterback from a first overall pick. And I would say the, bullish. the best guy drafted since 2013, <clears throat> Miles yeah. Garrett and Jadavian Clowney, and neither of them are quarterbacks exactly. at first overall picks. So it, it's, it's this wrong notion. And as I've seen this year, where uh, people are talking about the Dolphins are trying to trade up to, uh, to the first overall pick to the Bengals to get Joe Burrow. And yeah. I'm like, why would you do that? The, going through this list, it's clear you do not get a franchise QB. Even Cam Newton, who people say is a franchise QB, look what's happened now. Right? Exactly. Just so, don't put it off. Yeah. And, and Andrew Luck, the next probably better than Cam Newton QB and retired. So that notion that, First overall picks, you're cementing your team and you're way ahead of the curb. You're going to get a great quarterback. That's a false yeah. notion. And that's why I want that's you to I get saying. off Jameis a little bit. Yeah. I'm, if you get a first-round pick and he ends up being your franchise quarterback, that's – what's it called? That, that's a special player right there. Yeah. That's not it, – it's not like if you don't do that, you're a bust. Like, no. Like, if you're able to do that for your team and become a franchise quarterback, you're, you know, you're something special. You're something the league needs to look at. I would Calling say, him a bust because he hasn't made what? He, I get, have they made the playoffs since he came? I think I, so. Uh, maybe years? once. I think yeah, once. But, like, that ain't no bust. A I bust was, is the guy that, like I said, shouldn't be playing at that level. And if you're telling me that Winston shouldn't be playing at that level, I can name you a lot of quarterbacks a lot worse than him. And I'll say this. I think football and hockey are the hardest sports to draft. Because there's, there's so many variables. Basketball, you can kind of tell there's only two rounds. 
Baseball, yeah, exactly. there's not many guys taken in the lower rounds. They have 32 rounds in the draft. You don't see guys who are 30 round picks. 32 the, rounds. There is. You don't see guys who are 30th round pick making the making the show. In the NFL, you do see guys who are sixth, seventh round picks end up being great, i.e. Tom oh, yeah. Brady, right? And you exactly. see got a lot of guys first, second round picks who go nowhere. Um, it's hard to draft in the NFL. Some teams think you know they're good at it, but yeah. vast majority of players in the NFL were not taken in the first round. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's what I just want to say. People need to relax on Jameis, man. What I me, admit, the, go ahead. To me, the bust, the, at least the definition of that word, meets nowhere near what James Winston has done. The definition of a bust is Anthony Bennett. <laughs> For basketball terms, yeah. Yeah, like being just a solid player, even if you think first of all, that's not a bust, okay? Because yeah, yeah, exactly. drafting is, is part skill and knowledge but it's also luck yeah. let's be real right you can 100%. see as much as you want from a guy when he's a prospect but you don't really yeah. know how that's going to translate to a pro game exactly uh perfect example uh what where was he drafted uh baltimore ravens quarterback uh he was late first round or early second his name is escaping me now <laughs> lamar jackson lamar jackson he was what he was 100 first round yeah i think he was late first round like 28th or something or 18th yeah yeah and what, his first year, he played, what, maybe two games, I think? At end of the season, played three or four games and took him to the playoffs exactly. and, and played a playoff game. Give the man some time. Look what happened. Yeah. I, of course, he got, ki- he got kicked out, what, second round maybe? Yeah. Right, was it sec- for the first round? His first for season, Bamali? yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, like, you, like, I don't understand the bus notion. The, for, for me, the bus notion means that at the NFL level, you cannot play. Yeah, I think so. It's a little Just bit like different. you said with Anthony Bennett. Yeah. You could not play at the NBA level. Yeah. You're a bust. It's, it's a, like, you got to think of it different. I think people, well, we don't have to, but people think of it different from a first overall pick to just a first round pick. But just to go back to basketball, because it's easier yeah. than, than football, more people will probably know these guys. Like Andrew Wiggins, he's not a bust. People will say, oh, he wasn't worth the first overall pick. What? I think he was. You give me a guy who's going to average 22 points a game. I'm taking that yeah. first overall. Are you kidding me? And shooting 45 to 50%. But it's just mm. people are so quick to criticize. Uh, Jameis Winston, I think Especially it's easy now that rap. you have Tom Brady as your quarterback. It's easy to criticize the old guy. Exactly. I would, hey, I would have made the same move if I'm Bruce Arians and I'm Tampa. 100%. 100%. Right? You're you take can, a champion you can, over someone who's not. You can say what you want. Tom Brady's 42 and he's old and he's been on decline for four years. But if he can figure it out a little bit, I'm taking yeah. him over a lot of QB, not just Jameis Winston. I'm taking him, him over probably half the league right now, Tom Brady, for starting oh, 100%. QBs. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I mean. I feel like this this was just made. This comment was just made out of emotion. They're so excited now that they have Brady on their team that whatever was on their team before just seems like a bust. You know what? I'll say there was there's obviously I think in that organization they they didn't like Jameis for a while now. Yeah. Look at Bruce Arians, what he said after, what, week eight or something? When he said, uh, if we can win with this QB, why can't we win with another one? Like, they were just – even if I had a QB, a player on my team, and I'm running the team, and I don't love him, I'm not going to yeah. disrespect him to the media and hurt his morale. I'm going to try and, you know, big him up, gas him up, and give him some confidence at least and show my players that I got their back. Yeah, and it's unspoken, but, like, I'm telling you, some people might hear that and be like, oh, you know what? I was thinking about him, but now I don't want to if, if this GM is going to say that. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of hurting the man's future. So exactly. And now it's, he's, he's not going to have a starting job this year unless the, the Chargers want to give him a competition with Tyrod Taylor. And it's, I, mean, yeah, I don't even know who else, what other team could pick him up. The problem was Tom Brady waited to make his decision, which obviously, just like I said how Carolina – they intentionally didn't allow Cam Newton his release properly through free agency. Tampa Bay wasn't, really wasn't their fault because they had to wait for Tom Brady and he took some time in free agency. But by the time yeah. Jameis became available and he knew Tampa wasn't going to re-sign him, uh, it was kind of too late. Everybody filled their, their roster and their starting positions. So, I know. It's, it's just a bad position to be in, yeah. Where, where, where do you think Jameis Winston should go? What's the good scenario for him? Whether it's a starting position or sitting – as a backup for a year? <laughs> to be honest, the only team I can maybe think of is, uh, oh, why is the team name escape me now? Well, uh, 
Give me a jersey call. Jets, the Jets, sorry, the Jets. Because he he's a, he is a mobile quarterback. But they're they not moving. Great running. I don't think they're moving on from. Uh, see, his name is escaping me. The QB they drafted first round two years ago. Oh my god. You know what I'm talking about? All they're these names escape me now. But I'm not, just saying, they're not the moving position on from they were him. put into last year, they're, for me, at least every time I see, I hear about a free agent quarterback, I just feel like that, that, that's always my first initial thought. The Jets. Yeah, Sam Darnold. last Dar- year they went Sam- through like three. Yeah, but that's because Sam Darnold had got some sickness. Sam Darnold, they're not moving on from him. I think they're committed to Sam Darnold at least for another couple of years. I think they're sticking with him for at least another couple of years. He's shown some, you know, signs that he, he could be yeah. a – Starting quarterback just, just like, last year was when injury you have riddled. A quarterback that's mobile and having a strong running back like you do in Le'Veon Bell, mm-hmm. it always works out. So I can only think of a team really that has like a strong running back. Well, besides Jets, who else, do, who else could you even name? Well, because a strong running back helps, right? And Chargers lost uh, Gordon. Melvin Gordon, I believe, has gone somewhere else. But yeah. I didn't think of this. The one place I've seen people suggesting that he goes, I kind of like. He would be a backup for a year. But go to Pittsburgh. I saw a lot of really? analysts saying this. There's very good comparisons between him and Ben Roethlisberger. Bigger guy, but they're still mobile. They're gunslingers. Mm-hmm. And, but Ben Roethlisberger has learned to kind of taper back the interceptions compared to earlier in his career. Yeah. And I think their games are very similar. So I think sitting behind Ben Roethlisberger for a year, plus Ben Roethlisberger does not stay healthy for a season. So you're going to get some games in. And Mike Tomlin is a really, it's a really good coaching staff. I think that could be a good situation for him. I saw some yeah. people saying um, maybe go to Green Bay, sit behind Rodgers. I just – I don't see that comparison in QB style. And no, is, Matt, is Matt LaFleur going to spend a lot of time with Jameis Winston? No, because they're in the winning now phase. The Steelers yeah. try and win every year, but they shouldn't be winning every year like last year, right? So I think, but, I think Pittsburgh's a good situation if he wants to go. Sometimes you got to take a step back before you take two steps forward, right? Oh, 100%. But what were you saying earlier about uh, – you're telling me, at least, about Drew Brees. Oh, Drew Brees, uh, he signed with uh, was it CBS or Fox, whoever has Monday Night Football, CBS, over ESPN yeah. for when he retires. I guess he's going to be in the booth like uh, Tony Romo. From that, I'm assuming he's retiring soon. I think so, again, like he, he, just said, two, a he just signed a two-year deal with New Orleans, did he not? Or was it a one-year? I thought it was a one-year. Okay, yeah. Regardless, whether it's two-year or one-year, like you said, take a little step back. Maybe he can even go to New Orleans. Sit on the back end a little bit. Yeah, Wait till this guy heads into retirement and maybe he can be their starter. That's actually so, a, a really good idea. because they Is lost, he similar to what they had in Teddy Bridgewater, you know? Yeah. Oh, he signed with NBC Sports over ESPN for Monday Night Football. But wow. I think that's actually a really good idea because Teddy Bridgewater is gone. Taysom Hill, yeah. I think, is still there. So yeah, that, that depends if they, if New Orleans really believes that Taysom Hill is their future, which I think Sean Payton really likes him, but the Sean Payton like him as a starting QB. He said he's yeah. compared him to Joe Montana before, which boggled my mind because that's, you know, top three QB all time. A big comparison. <laughs> he said he throws like him. So if he, if Sean Payton is happy with Taysom Hill and sees he's going to be his future QB, it doesn't make sense. But if Sean Payton's open to potentially Jameis, sure. Exactly. Uh, but how long yeah. does Big Ben have, man? Bad injury problems. And Big Ben said last season that he thought about retiring the year before. I know. I was going to say, once you get into those retirement talks, like, it's almost it's pretty much done by then. Like, you're just, we're just waiting for the countdown to when you're out. So, I, maybe, yeah. I think maybe he has a season left in him. Who, Roethlisberger? Or yeah. Breeze? I think both. Well, I, I think Breeze could play a couple more years. Well, Big both. Ben, yeah, yeah. I don't know if his body's going to hold up two more NFL seasons. Because he takes – the most massive hits because he waits in the pocket, waits to the absolute last too, moment, yeah. and he just gets throttled to the ground. He's a lot slower too. He's not mobile like most quarterbacks, so he can't really escape any yeah, hits he's, or any. When he was younger, he was surprisingly escapable from he the was, pocket yeah. and not, could dodge not, not traffic. Now, that's why you <laughs> see those injuries coming in. All right, should we uh, happen? get into Brandon Cooks? <laughs> At least one positive for Houston. So, if you weren't aware, the Rams traded uh, Brandon Cooks, I believe a fourth, to yeah. Houston for a second-round pick. Which mm-hmm. perspective do you want to start from, the Rams or Houston? Uh, I've never even thought of looking at it from the Rams' perspective, actually. 
So the one thing I was thinking from the Rams' perspective, right? You yeah. just let go of Todd Gurley, so you don't have a yeah. running back. Exactly. Brandon Cooks was your probably first wide receiver or um, Woods last season. The whole team sucked last season. Top Jared, two, if not, yeah. Jared Goff was sucked. And Brandon Cooks did not have a good season. Uh, he only had, what was it, uh, 583 receiving yards, 42 receptions, only two TDs. So it's, do you think they're trying to retool on the fly here? Maybe and, and get some new weapons? Because I think they're, they're taking a wide receiver with that second round pick they got. You have to oh, fill that slot. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. well, exactly. You have to fill it. And they're at that, I guess with the season they had last year, they're at that spot that maybe they might start, you know, getting yeah. some young talent, seeing how that works out with them. Do you but, think. Uh, go on. I was going to say, with a. I don't understand. I, I kind of at the same time don't understand it. Because as we, as we were talking about, Goff has been getting worse, right? Well, so why two, year, you... two years ago he was great. Last year he wasn't. Exactly. And they have a and lot of money invested in him. I feel like you're kind of handicapping him at this point. Why are you getting rid of his receiver? Yeah. What, like, what's, what difference are they trying to make to better themselves? They just lost their running back. So now they're going to have to focus on their passing game. So now they just lost one of their top receivers. Yeah, it's, it's weird to me be, for the reasons you just said, right? You paid Jared Goff so much money. Exactly, right yeah. at the time, the biggest guaranteed QB contract, and now you're retracting from his offense. Todd Gurley, I understand that move. You're paying him a lot of money, and you couldn't stay healthy for chronic, yeah. chronic knee issues. Anytime you hear the word right. chronic, it's dangerous. But it's you're taking a step back, I guess, before you go forward. Um, their division is tough. I think Seattle and San Francisco are both, you know, the favorites again to come out of that division. One hundred percent. So yeah, it's just weird. But how can I think something you can't ignore? Brandon Cooks in four years now has been moved on by from three good teams: Saints, mm. Pats, and Rams. Do you think that's just a coincidence, or perhaps there's an issue with Brandon himself? Well, that that can't be a coincidence, know, man. Know. That can't be a coincidence. It, three, it elite be, teams, three elite teams, three elite teams, and three good coaching staffs moved on from you. I feel like maybe it's just because of the positions that the teams were in at the time. I don't feel like it should hurt his his game, I guess, at least to say yeah. like to say that he's a worse wide receiver than he was what they thought he was. I feel like it's just the position. Like like you said with the Rams. The Rams are they ha it's a tough time to get past uh Seattle and uh San Francisco. Yeah. So at this time maybe they're okay with taking a step back and relaxing yeah. for a few seasons. And relieving some salary space. Exactly. I don't yeah. know what the what position New Orleans was when they the Pats gave and away, Saints uh, were are both but... good teams winning and they moved on from him. So and maybe it does say something about him. At least I, the other team. If I if I'm another team looking at it, to me it would say something. Yeah. The thing is, he had really good seasons in both New England and New Orleans. Yeah. So and you think it's like a locker room problem? Perhaps, or stylistic issue. I don't know. It's hard to read into because I've never heard. One thing you know bad about Brandon Cooks, you That's hear what I mean. That's what I you hear like stuff about just... those guys, right? Like the Josh Gordons and stuff, issues with them in the locker room and all that. Yeah, I've never heard even them. a whisper. Okay, or relax. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a whole hour discussion about how Beckham is targeted. <laughs> I, know, by I, didn't the media. Want, I didn't want to mention. Uh, yeah, Beckham, but, but I had to. No, I've, just... I've heard enough of media talk about why he keeps messing up. The media targets him. I can give you half an hour to explain that if you want. <laughs> I want to hear it. What is it? Quickly. What has Odell Beckham Jr. ever done that's so bad? All hmm? of his teammates. What has Odell Beckham Jr. ever done that is so bad? Where his emotions are asleep. That's so bad? All of his teammates say they love him. Every single oh? person he's played with no, 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 says I, they I, love I, him. He's a, he's a big personality as a person, I feel. It's, it, it has nothing to do, I feel, with him trying to gain fame or trying to be out there yeah. in the media. He just is just the person just, he is. Just quickly on the uh, Odell note, I was yeah. laughing hard because New York Giants post on Instagram yesterday, um, like pick your all-time uh, offensive Giants team, right? So they give you their best QBs, best running backs, best wide receivers, right? Yeah. Odell Beckham Jr. not even on their list of best wide receivers all time. Are yeah, you? I can understand that. How he is arguably your most talented wide receiver you've ever had. I know, but they won't say it. Hakeem Nix was on that list. I love Hakeem Nix. I'm taking Odell that... Beckham Jr. over Hakeem Nix every time. But the thing is... I think they're who, better. Uh, who is that uh, receiver that you loved? 
Victor Cruz. His name, Victor Cruz. I was going to say, the way late, was he on that list? Yeah. Plaxico oh, Burris was on that list. He won the Super Bowl with us, though. Yeah. But uh, with Ola, but I feel like he's just, if they put him on the list, it makes, them look, it makes that move that they did look bad with letting him go. I guess right. It's like, it's how a, it's are you going to let this man go and then say he's your best wide receiver? One of top he's five all time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a PR move. Oh, 100%. And again, yeah, you don't want to look bad. So you're not going to say Odell's name. All right. Any other NFL topics or we'll get, get yeah, to move that's on? That's pretty much it. I'm just – I'm hurt by the disrespect given to James Winston. <laughs> I think you'll be all right. I think you see some similarities in him and Cam Newton. and it I do. Bad emotions for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, you know, if, if, they, if Carolina came out and said that about Cam Newton, which they never would because he was MVP. Yeah. But – you know, I feel for him. <laughs> All right. I hear that. All right. Time to move on. Okay.